In the same exact way that energy is stored within the electric field inside a capacitor, energy is stored within the magnetic field inside an inductor. So let's suppose we have the following inductor that consists of loops of wires as shown. Now let's suppose an alternating electric current I is traveling from left to right along our inductor as shown. Now at some given moment in time, let's suppose our electric current is increasing. So an increasing electric current traveling through the loops of our inductor will create an increasing magnetic field inside the loops of wire as shown in the following diagram. Now, because our magnetic field will be increasing, it will create an increase in magnetic flux. And by Faraday's law, we know a change in magnetic flux will create, will induce an EMF inside our loops of wire. And that induced EMF will oppose the change in our magnetic flux. So because our magnetic flux is, is increasing, the induced EMF will create an electric current that will oppose the motion of this initial electric current. Now let's determine the equation for the quantity of power that must be supplied to our inductor to essentially oppose that EMF. So. If an electric current I is traveling through an inductor with an inductance given by L, the rate of energy being supplied to our inductor to essentially oppose that induced EMF is given by the following equation. So, the rate of change of energy is simply our power, and power is equal to the product of the electric current and the voltage. Now the voltage induced is given by the following uh, letter, and this was defined in a previous lecture by the following product. So our induced EMF inside our inductor is equal to the product of the inductance L and our rate of change of our electric current with respect to time, so di dt. This is the quantity of power that is required to essentially supply our inductor to oppose that EMF that is induced as a result of that increase in magnetic flux. So now let's answer the following question. What exactly is the work done that is required to increase the electric current from some value zero to a value given by I in an infinitely small amount of time given by dt. So we essentially want to use the following equation in the following manner. So because we're dealing with an infinitely small quantity of time dt, that means that will require an infinitely small quantity of work given by dw. Now, because power is equal to the work divided by the time, we see that dw is equal to power multiplied by dt. Now, power is simply this equation, so let's replace power with this equation, and notice now dt will appear on top and bottom, so we can cancel this out and we get the following result our infinitely small quantity of work is equal to the product of L, I, and D, I, where L is simply our quantity of inductance and I is our electric current. Now, to calculate the total work done, we simply need to take this value and we need to integrate. So work is equal to the integral of dw. So we're essentially integrating from 0 to i and dw is replaced with this equation. So L multiplied by i multiplied by di. So this is a constant, we can take it outside our integral and then we evaluate our integral and we get L times I squared divided by 2. So this gives us the quantity of work that is required to be done on the inductor to increase the current from a value of 0 to a value of I. 
Now, since work done is equal to the energy stored in our inductor, we see that work is equal to our potential energy inside our inductor, which is equal to this equation. So, if we essentially increase our electric current by uh, 2, if we increase it by a factor of 2, we increase our storage amount by a factor of 4. Now, when we store energy inside a capacitor, we are really storing energy inside the electric field between the plates of our capacitor. Similarly, when we store energy inside a conductor, we are storing energy inside the magnetic field of the loops found within our wire inside our inductor. Now, let's actually determine the equation using this equation. So we want to build a relationship between our potential energy and our magnetic field B. Let's suppose that our inductor is a solenoid. So in our lecture on solenoids, we were able to show that the magnetic field within a solenoid is given by this equation. Now in a previous lecture, we were able to determine that our inductance within a solenoid is given by this equation where n is the number of loops of wire, mu naught is the permeability of free space, A is the cross-sectional area of our solenoid, I is our electric current in that solenoid, and L is the length of the solenoid. So let's take this equation. So the quantity of potential energy stored within our solenoid is equal to Li squared divided by 2. Now this is equal to, so we know L is equal to this quantity, so let's replace L with this equation. Then let's take this equation, let's rearrange it, and let's solve for I. We see that I is equal to BL divided by N times mu naught. So let's actually square this, and let's evaluate, and let's cross out a few things. We get the following result. So the energy stored inside the magnetic field within our inductor, specifically within our solenoid, is given by this equation. So U is equal to the square of our magnetic field multiplied by the area multiplied by the length divided by 2 multiplied by the permeability of free space. Now, Notice A multiplied by L is simply the cross-sectional area of our solenoid multiplied by the length. So A multiplied by L is simply the volume within our solenoid. So this equation gives us the energy that is stored within the volume found inside our solenoid, specifically within our magnetic field. So if we take this equation and we divide both sides by A times L, so we divide by the volume, we get something known as energy density. Energy density defined using lowercase u is equal to b squared divided by 2 multiplied by mu naught. So we simply took this equation and we divided it by the volume by a multiplied by l. So this is the energy stored inside our magnetic field inside our solenoid and this is the energy density which is essentially this equation divided by the the volume found inside our solenoid. So, once again, in the same exact way that energy is stored within the electric field inside a capacitor, energy is stored within the magnetic field inside an inductor.